Making history, a verb and a noun. Action, innovation, making history. The phrase aptly describes the through line for more than 170 years at Columbia College. Founded in 1851 by local lawyers, farmers, clergy, and the University of Missouri president, they shared one goal, ensuring their daughters and other young women had the same opportunity that men had in this early Middle West of America. Three founding visionaries of Christian Female College endowed its beginnings with quality in every way. Because if you think of our founding in 1851, it was strictly a college for women. It was designed as an all-woman school, and we were the first college west of the Mississippi to include women. The charter that the the uh, state of Missouri issued on the day that we were uh, made a official uh, educational institution it was fascinating. I'd like to read to you from that just briefly. The charter said that this institution has been established to afford young ladies the opportunity to acquire a thorough collegiate education by introducing a more extensive course of study and a more rigid discipline of mind than is usual in the ordinary school for girls. Now that sounds rather quaint to us now, uh, given the many opportunities that women have in higher education. But in those days, uh, the professors at the University of Missouri were very troubled by the fact that uh, while, while it was an excellent institution for young men, uh, young ladies, including many of their own daughters, did not have similar opportunities. The seeds planted grew and thrived despite the Civil War and economic downturns. A turning point occurred in 1893 after hiring Franklin St. Clair as president. After only four months on the job, he suddenly died. The college trustees recognized his wife, Luella Wilcox St. Clair, as an energetic and highly competent leader. She accepted their offer to become one of the first female college presidents in the nation at age 28. Again, making history. Luella St. Clair would go on to serve for 19 non-consecutive years between 1893 and 1920. And making history is exactly what she would do during those years. St. Clair was known as the steam engine in petticoats and her accomplishments through the years were immense. They included doubling the size of the faculty, expanding academics to include a school of modern languages, and reinventing the four-year school as one of the country's first accredited two-year junior colleges. Additionally, she held the first Ivy Chain Ceremony and directed the construction of a multitude of buildings on campus, including Lorna Auditorium, Missouri Hall, Dorsey Hall, and one of the state's first indoor swimming pools. She also supervised the construction of St. Clair Hall, which was originally named in honor of her husband, but eventually became known as a dedication to her legacy. In the 1920s, the college would continue to grow under President Edgar Lee. He strengthened the curriculum, encouraged the founding of more than 20 student clubs, endorsed a much stronger and independent student government, and dropped some, but not all, rules about curfews and chaperones. Lee had a democratic nature and cared deeply about the welfare of each student. The result was full dormitories and a still expanding reputation for excellence. During this same period, Christian College produced one of its most famous and enduring alumni in Jane Froman, who would go on to become hugely famous and a respected star of radio, stage, screen and television. In the late 1960s, the college continues to make history under the dynamic leadership of President H. Merrill Hill. He was described as young, innovative and aggressive. Within a five-year period, Christian College changed its name to Columbia College, admitted men for the first time, transitioned to a four-year liberal arts institution and established the school's extended studies division, now known as Columbia College Global. By doing so, the new Columbia College was initiating its long-time commitment to the education of servicemen and women. If a veteran is serious about their educational journey, I would highly recommend Columbia College. The 1970s and 80s brought huge growth in men's and women's sports, 
the construction of Southville Gymnasium, the JW and Lois Stafford Library, and the birth of Scooter the Cougar, the beloved mascot. The college was making history again when it appointed Gerald T. Bruder president in 1995. Historian Paulina Batterson described Bruder as congenial, quietly dignified, and empowering. He practiced civility and respect in all relationships and was accordingly revered by everyone in the college family. Bruder's leadership would bring about the first graduate degree programs, a pioneering law enforcement training institute, and the creation of the school's online program, one of the nation's first in higher education, and now rated as one of the best. We were one of the first to start online learning, online education, and it's still a very important part of our college today. Today, there are 97,000 Columbia College alumni around the globe. The college's alumni include a broad spectrum of leaders, educators, healers, scientists, explorers, and warriors. Their achievements range from 1871 Christian College Academy graduate Vinnie Ream, who at the age of 18 sculpted Lincoln in bronze for the U.S. Capitol, to the late Brigadier General and former Tuskegee Airman Charles E. McGee. 1975 Columbia College graduate. Columbia College's president today is the esteemed Dr. David Russell. He was a long time chief of staff for nine presidents at the University of Missouri, a former state commissioner for education, and a retired United States Army Lieutenant Colonel. Columbia College is really proud of being a good neighbor in the community. Uh, we try to participate in projects uh, with the city as much as we, as we can and uh, we were part of the Gateway Plaza project to help set up a new uh, gateway to downtown Columbia um, and we're, we're proud of the fact that our name is, is there along with uh, Stevens College and the University of Missouri as partners who have helped build this community along the way. The Columbia College of yesterday, today, and tomorrow is always making history and changing lives. It's what they do. Ladies, gentlemen, and esteemed friends, please welcome into the Boone County Hall of Fame, Columbia College. <laughs>